Hi students, I'm Dr. Lindsay. I'm going to be your instructor for the next uh, term here, term two. So first of all, I apologize that I did not get your welcome email or this intro video out to you yesterday. Uh, there was an oversight on my schedule. Basically, I screwed up, so sorry about that. And if anyone has any trouble with the first deadlines that are Saturday and Sunday this week, um, I will take partial responsibility for that. And if you need any wiggle room on those due dates, please send me an email uh, because I know you're getting this one day late, which is uh, my fault, not yours. So let's run through a few things. This is uh, professionalism, I'm sorry, practice and professionalism in healthcare. It's a pretty fun course. It may directly relate to your jobs now, um, if many of you are in careers in healthcare already. Um, and if not, it will certainly relate to your uh, professions in the future. So let's take a look at the calendar to begin with. The calendar has all the due dates for this course. Week one, since we're starting on a Wednesday, is a little bit different. If you haven't already, take a look at the discussion this week. Both of your discussions, the original discussion post and your reply post, will be due on Saturday. There is something that you do need to know about the discussion posts, and that's you um, in order to get all the points for the discussion, you have to include at least one resource, and that resource has to be in APA format. I'm going to take a quick time out on that for now, and I'm going to come back to APA format in the future. Uh, but discussions due on Saturday. Again, if you need any wiggle room with that, or if uh, my fault being a day late interrupts your schedule, please let me know. All right, um, on Friday, We'll have a live lecture at 2 p.m. You do not have to come, it's not required, but if you can't make it at 2 p.m. on a Friday, you do need to watch the recording. I'm going to post the recording in the course announcements right where you found this video. Um, you can watch that. There's going to be a keyword or a key phrase in that video that you need to answer on Sunday. So Sunday night at 11.59, you need to enter your answer or your keyword by um, from that video. You'll also have the beginning of your course project due on Sunday. So those due dates are coming up really quickly here. Week one is a short week, so there's a lot to get through in the first four days. But after that, it gets spaced out a little bit, and you'll see that there's a theme here. We begin module two on a Monday. Tuesday, your first discussion is due, so your initial post. On Wednesdays, we'll have our live lecture. Then, Saturday, uh, the reply to your peers in the discussion forum is due. And on Sunday, your course project will be due, as well as the live classroom that you heard on Wednesday, or you watched the video. The same pattern is going to go all the way through week six. So we start a new module on a Monday. The initial discussion post on, is due on a Tuesday live lecture on Wednesday if you can make it. If not, there will be a recording available. Saturday, reply post due. Sunday, your course project and the live classroom keyword needs to be entered. So I think you get the idea there. Let's take a look at what I meant by APA format. Many of you, this is old hat. So if you've already gone through this before, ignore this part. But if you've never had to use APA format before, I wanted to show you how to get there. Under the Resources tab, there are tons of library resources here, but this APA guide is going to be your best friend for your entire term at Rasmussen. On the left-hand side, we have References. There's a drop-down menu, and it tells you exactly what to do and how to cite a source. I bet a lot of you are going to use websites, so I'll use that as my example. When I click on Websites, there is an information box that tells me exactly what I need to look for. If I scroll down, I have examples of what my citation should look like. If I have a website with an author, my reference should include the author's last name, comma, first initial period, middle initial period, in parentheses, the date, and then the title of the article, and retrieved from the full URL. An example below, last name, comma, first initial, period, the date of publication, the title of the author, I'm sorry, the title of the article, and then the retrieved from, keep in mind here, it's the full URL. If you're using something like Mayo Clinic, 
you, you, you need to use the entire web address, not just mayoclinic.com. I need the rest of it. What site were you on specifically? Uh, there's also other examples here. If you have a website with no author, the instructions pop up below. If you have a website that's not dated, I would not recommend using one without a date, but if you do, here's the instructions on how to do that. And again, if you're using something other than a website, you can click on any of these other um, tabs on the left. So anything that's within your course, maybe a PowerPoint that's in the course, you can click on that, scroll down, and here we go, PowerPoint slides posted an online course. It tells you exactly how to cite that. Um, you have lecture notes, oops, sorry, clicking the wrong button. Lecture notes and any textbooks that you're using, vital source versus different kinds of source different kinds of textbooks. It's all there for you. If you have trouble with APA, let me know. Let's go back to our course page and take a look at the syllabus. All right, my instructor information is at the top, so my name, my phone number. This is my office phone, so if you call this and I don't answer, I probably won't because I don't sit at my desk very often. Um, I will listen to your voicemail though. Even if I'm at home, that voicemail gets forwarded to uh, my email, so I can check that at any time. But if you call and don't leave a voicemail, I won't know that you called. All right, you can use this email listed here, but if it's regarding course information, I request that you do that through this Communicate tab. You can hit Quick Message and find me that way. If you've never used this before, I'll show you how it works quick. Let me just drag this down. When you hit 2, you can select who you would like to send this to, um, either by groups, by teams, or you can search through members. And you can search through this to find me, and here I am. Click, and, um, click on my name, click 2, say OK, and you can type your message into this box. All right, I think that's major things for now. Under the Lessons tab, we are looking at Module 1. In Module 1, we have a discussion that's already going on, so take a look into that. If you haven't already posted, looks like many of you have, which is great. If you haven't already posted, make sure you post something in here that includes some kind of source. It doesn't have to be a clinical study or anything that's a peer-reviewed journal but it does need to be a source of some kind. So check that out. Back to Module 1. You have a course project that's due this week. The information that's listed in this course project can be found in this week's material. So go back through all of the written material for this week if you haven't already done so. And it's very, very, um, I don't want to say it's easy. Um, it is a little time consuming, but it is step by step um, it's written out for you very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah, anyway, maybe you know what I'm talking about. It's written out for you in a step-by-step -step manner, so hopefully you won't have any trouble meeting these bullet points below. All right, I'm clearly losing um, my mind today, so sorry about that. Lastly, the live classroom. I'll be holding the live classroom next week. Um, when you pop in here, I'm going to change my view to a student view so this looks like yours. When you go into the live lecture classroom, you will be asked to answer a question. When you hit begin now, it will say in the box, enter your response for the live classroom this week. You won't know what that is until you watch the video. So as of right now, you can't answer this question. But on Friday, after the live lecture, if you're not able to attend live, all you need to do is watch the recording, listen for my prompt. I will tell you to um, enter in this word or phrase, or tell me what you think about X, Y, Z. That's what you'll put into this, um, into this box, and then you'll submit this. When you submit it, it will show um, that you've earned question mark out of 10 points. So until I log in and grade those, you're going to see that question mark. That means that it's submitted but ungraded. 
after it's graded, you'll see a number pop up here, 10 out of 10 or so forth. So I hope that helps get you started here. Um, I know that I posted this one day late, and I'm really sorry about that. I hope that we can get back on track here and have everything ready to go for week two. Um, for those of you who are listening to this on Thursday, I may see you tomorrow during our Friday live lecture. If not, I will uh, keep tuning in and making sure that we're all on track as we go through this quarter. So let me know if you have questions. I'm here, I'm available, and I'm happy to help you out if you have anything that you need to talk to me about. All right, have a good one.